How did you possibly find roses this time of year? Happy birthday. <laughs> They're gorgeous, thank you. You're welcome. So, are we still on for tonight? No big surprises, no big parties. Just you and I and Jack. And that makes me very happy. Well, that makes me happy too then. Hi, hearties. Welcome back to Tika Trail. We are on episode 9 of season 9. There is a lot to talk about, so there will be two parts of this episode review. We started with that quick scene of Elizabeth finding out roses waiting for her on the table with a lovely birthday card from Lucas. My question is though, like how did Lucas get in, you know? I wonder if he has a key to her house or maybe the back door was unlocked. Um, yeah, how did he get those flowers in? You can see that Lucas was very impressed with himself in getting roses for his girlfriend and he knows that she will love them and it's just that satisfaction and positive pride of himself in getting the roses to her because it was hard to have roses during that time of year like Elizabeth said during her phone call to Lucas. Say Elizabeth, you wouldn't happen to have Abigail's number, do you? I'm trying to track down Henry. He didn't come back with Fiona. And he isn't with Christopher and Bellingham. Oh, well, he isn't with Abigail either. She just called to wish me a happy birthday. Oh. Is everything all right? Why don't I come by? I can explain. You know the way. I'll see you soon. All right. If you pay close attention to the episode, there were a couple of scenes where you can see the leaves on the ground. So we are definitely in the season of fall, autumn, and it's Elizabeth's birthday. And it's really nice we get to celebrate and see Elizabeth celebrate her birthday with little Jack and Lucas in this episode. I don't want you to worry, but I think you should know what's going on. When you say you don't want me to worry... Wyman Walden is back. You thought he was gone for good. Why do you think he's back now? I have a fair hunch, but I need to explain something to you first. Here is the big story of the episode. Walden is back in town, and if you watch the episode, he literally walked in into Lucas' office after Lucas hung up the phone with Elizabeth, and he and Walden literally sat on Lucas' chair like he owned the office and the saloon, and I'm just like, what the heck are you doing? He is strengthening Lucas, uh, forcing Lucas to sell the saloon to Walden, and this is a really big story of the episode. My black eye. I got it because I refused to continue working with Walden. You were working with him? I was trying to let him run a grift on me, a swindle, so I could beat him in his own game. Why would you do that? Because these kinds of people just think they can take whatever they want. I was trying to operate a sting, have him arrested by my contact at the Treasury Department, my friend from New Orleans. She's been after him for some time. <laughs> Only she went silent, so I called it off. I haven't been able to reach her since. It takes a lot of courage and confidence and strength for a man to tell his girlfriend, his partner, what is really going on. He finally explained the reason behind the black guy. He really doesn't want Elizabeth to worry, and I can see that as a good reason. Now Walden's back and he's muscling me into selling him the Queen of Hearts. All right, I, I appreciate what you were trying to do, but I don't think you did yourself any favors handling it this way. Lucas, I think we should talk to Bill. And that what Elizabeth wanted to do in this scene. She wanted to help Lucas and worry about this situation and worry about the safety of him and her family, her, her son, little Jack. So this is really good that Lucas finally told her about what's really going on and she offered an advice. We need to talk to Bill, we need to sort this out. And it's nice though, Lucas told her and she can like give him some advice and perspective on how to proceed and she can also give him advice on what to do and what not to do. Uh, Lucas cannot handle this by himself. We need to go to someone that can help him uh, with the legal side of this situation. Um, of course, Elizabeth 
most likely very disappointed of what her boyfriend did or tried to do. Um, but she knows that he did it with a good intention, but it did not work. May I be worried now? When you're in a relationship, you really need to be open and honest about the good things and the bad things. And that's the purpose of relationship. You go through life together, you are happy together, you celebrate good things, but you also deal with challenges and obstacles and you worry together. Not his fault. I asked everyone involved not to discuss it. It's really nice, Bill, right away, told Elizabeth did not look it for. He did not hide it from you for a bad reason. I told him not to tell anyone, really. There's a very real possibility the coal mine could be reopened. Reopened? By, by whom? Smith and his investors through the oil company if they become majority shareholders. <sighs> and because coal is used to make steel, they'll likely be the foundry supplier. Bill and Elizabeth have been in Hope Valley for a long, long time. They know the past, the history of that mine. No one wants to reopen that mine because it's just a bad memory for Hope Valley. Like, what happened to that mine in the past is just something that you don't talk about, something that you don't open. <laughs> like, people don't want to go back to that bad past of that mine. That's why there hasn't been any construction out of the foundry. Coal was the missing piece to make this happen. And that's why Walden's back. He must have heard of deals in the offing. I, I just don't understand. The judge ruled that the mine could never be reopened. Judge Parker, who made that ruling, died last year. And reopening that mine is going to bring up a lot of emotion and bad memory for the people of Hope Valley. Lucas, I assumed he learned the history of that mine and how it brought bad memories to the people of Hope Valley and see him looking down in the scene just like oh boy like Elizabeth not gonna like this I know she's not gonna like Walden and Smith and the investor reopening the mine she's gonna freak out like she knows what happened to that mine and how it affected the whole town the oil company will no doubt challenge that ruling and have very deep pockets to do so and Walden is here to take advantage of the whole situation so what do we do? Well, we do the only thing we can do. We let Walden by the Queen of Hearts. You can see Elizabeth as you find more information from Bill. She's just like, this is bigger than I thought. This is more than what Luca told me so far. Like, this is a really serious situation. And my boyfriend is involved. Like, this is like season six again, but on the grander scale it's just like bigger um so this is this is a tough situation not only for lucas and elizabeth but for bill in the town of hope valley hope valley versus walden and his guys this is not really good and i think someone i'm sorry i forgot your name someone mentioned smith was mentioned in the past i think season six somebody mentioned to me on youtube she was like yeah, the name Smith was mentioned before, I think by Henry. Something happened in season six, so this is actually already a foreshadow coming true in season nine. Smith actually finally appeared in Hope Valley in season nine. Were you not going to say goodbye? Of course. I only found out this morning, and I've, and I've been rushing around ever since. Found out what? Jeffrey's pursuing the false charge against me. So I'm required to appear in the court of jurisdiction back in Chicago. I cannot believe May is leaving. Like, I thought she would stay in Hope Valley for good. Like, is she just such a recurring character of season 9? Like, is she not ever gonna come back? And there's something that happened after this scene that made me question, like, 
Okay, maybe it's not me and Nathan. Uh, we will talk more about that later on. So Nathan, just like you didn't tell me, like you're gonna say goodbye to me just now, just like that. You didn't give me enough time to prepare, even though she just found out that morning, like it wasn't really her fault that she didn't tell Nathan right away. Where do you want me to go with you? You have no idea what that means to me. But you can't leave Allie, and I have no idea how long I'll be. Well, I could call the deputy chief, either one that Bill spoke to. I, I can make sure that you're safe. But very considerate of Allie, like, don't leave her family because of me. You have a daughter to raise, like, your job, your life is in Hope Valley, like, don't leave for me. And Nathan was willing to take that sacrifice and leave Hope Valley and Allie behind and take off with Mae to make sure she was safe and to basically win her back and bring her back to Hope Valley. I'm not afraid of Jeffrey anymore. But thank you for caring. You know, on the day I arrived, as I rode past you. My only regret is not letting you catch me. <laughs> yeah, mine too. So it's just a question mark. <laughs> like, the big question is May coming back to Hope Valley at the end of the season or in season 10. Like, is she ever gonna come back to Hope Valley? And there's some other question that arose in this episode that put a question mark on Nathan's future love life. Like, is there another woman that the writers are um, targeting for, for him uh, that is not May? Uh, we will talk about that. Listen, May, I, um, I owe you a lot for helping me. <laughs> and for helping Newton. So I, I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. I felt so, so sad for Nathan. And it was really nice of him. He thank her for everything. Like, you're a great friend to me. That's number one. And you helped me so much with myself and my horse. You were there for me since the beginning. And it was very heartbreaking to see Nathan watch this great female friend walk away from his life, not knowing if she will ever come back. And that is really, really tough. Can I walk you out? Would you wait here? I really don't want to say goodbye. She hates goodbye. She looks like the way she said goodbye to him. She really didn't say goodbye. So she's not a person that loves goodbye or say goodbye face to face. She's just like, I'm not going to say goodbye. Just like, leave the door open. I might come back. I might not. Nathan seemed very heartbroken. It's like one of those situations in life where you thought you have a chance with someone special. Like, you really want to be in a relationship with someone, like you really, really like someone and you think destiny and fate brought you two together, but something happened, the universe like show a major rock at you and like, psh, nope, the door is closed on that one. That's how I feel for Nathan in this situation. And I felt so, so sad. I like, I really liked the friendship and that can see that it can lead to something bigger than a friendship. But wow. <laughs> I'm just really shocked and sad. I actually like the character May. Nathan, of course, he stepped out of the saloon and wanted to see her. It's like in real life, like when you want to say goodbye to someone and you have this long distance relationship or you have a, a friend or someone that lives like in a country far away and you have to say your goodbye, like, you know, you hug as much as you can, like, you want to see the 
last second, last image of that person in front of you and capture it and and just enjoy that last image of that person, if that makes sense. Like Nathan who have like stayed inside the saloon and just like went off his usual day instead of like watching May leave. I think Nathan stepping out of the saloon and watching her leave is basically how he is feeling. Like he's really sad and he didn't really want her to go. And he took every last opportunity of seeing her like right there in front of him and to get a good last picture of her and to capture that memory of her face and all the time that they had together. I hope that makes sense. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about in this scene is Faith. May said goodbye to Faith, um, not Nathan. So that also shows how May is feeling for Nathan. She doesn't want to leave. Like There's no way she wanted to leave Hope Valley, but she had to for that reason. Jeffrey, like, I had a bad feeling like he would do something against May after last episode. And I was right. Like, he he planned something. He is not giving up on May. And it's just torture for her. So she said goodbye to Faith, but not Nathan. And the last thing I want to talk about is Faith. <laughs> and someone on social media was talking about how Elizabeth had those three topics. Um... For a season, uh, for a reason, uh, and for a lifetime. If you remember during season eight, and I was thinking, okay, if May is like one of those three categories, and Faith maybe a lifetime, and I'm just like starting to question myself, and I'm like, what is going on in Nathan's life? Like, I'm probably wrong, but I was just like randomly thinking, okay, like, Elizabeth for a reason. May for a season and Faith for a lifetime. That would be like a crazy twist. Not like surprisingly, not a surprise a hundred percent. Like we, some of us have like guesses of, oh, it would be Nathan and Faith. It would be Nathan and Fiona. It would be Nathan and May. It would be Nathan, um, someone that we don't know. Um, so yeah, this is really interesting. I'm probably overthinking again, but when I saw Faith um, saying goodbye to May in this scene, and Nathan just watching the interaction between Faith and May, I'm like, it did mean Faith the one for Nathan. <laughs> what happened? <sighs> this monster started attacking me. Oh. Uh, will you help me clean up? You don't have another mop? All right. Oh, I just saw me. Oh, that poor woman. When Florence said the monster started attacking me, I thought it was so funny when I watched it on Sunday night. That's like the line of the episode, in my opinion. Does Faith think she'll come back? We've talked about it, but I doubt Faith can give an honest answer. Why is that? She's been rather subtle about it, but ever since his accident, I'm of the opinion that Faith is carrying a torch for Nathan. Well, what about Carson? Their relationship was on the wane, even before Carson left. I'm going to stop it here. Part two will be focused on nighttime in Hope Valley. A lot of things happen during nighttime in Hope Valley. And a lot of Lucas and Elizabeth content coming up really soon. And some few things that happened the next morning. I will save that for part two. It will be up within a day or two from this video. Um, but I want to leave it here. Um, I didn't really plan to bring this scene into play, but I really wanted to talk about it because it raised a lot of questions for myself. I'm like, okay, this is really something. So maybe Faith is the one for Nathan. Um, what Molly said in the scene, I'm like, is that like a foreshadow? Is that like a hidden subtle message from the writers to the audience of the show? Like. Okay, so May probably never gonna come back, and Nathan and Faith will end up together. Uh, that would be an interesting twist. Um, not a hundred percent surprise. Like we kind of knew there was something going on with Faith and Nathan a little bit, but um, it's just something that was like 
in the back burner and now it's coming back into the light and you're like, okay, May is out of the picture. Who would be Nathan love of his life? Like, who? He'll be fake. He'll be someone new. Or May will come back at the end of the season or season 10. I just hope there will be not another love triangle. Like, I'll be really shocked if May come back at the end of the season and she sees Nathan the Faith having a connection and that will lead to love triangle season 10. I will go nuts and I'll be like, <laughs> not again. Do I want to go to another love triangle? No. But that thought of uh, the recent season of Lifetime that Rosemary uh, brought up over Elizabeth Love Life in season eight, uh, that those three questions it came back into my mind when I watched the scene between Molly and Florence and the scene of Nathan watching May uh, leaving and Faith waving goodbye to her. So uh, we'll see. I don't know if anyone thinks of that. Let me know. Um, this is really, really interesting. This is like some twist going on. And we still not there yet. Um, and we only halfway to the episode. And a lot more things happen in the second half of episode 9. I hope you enjoyed this part 1. Shout out to Shelby. She tweeted me, uh... A few days ago about the last episode review. I wanted to give you a shout out and thank you for your support, Shelby. Um, yeah, that is all I have to say right now. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is all I have to say right now. <laughs> Part 2 will be up really soon, so look out for that. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. And again, as usual, comment your thoughts um, on this first half of this episode down below in the comment section. I apologize for YouTube comment section. Um, last episode, not a lot of people commented, so I'm not sure if it's YouTube or if I covered everything. But I apologize. I really try my best to keep the comment section on. Um, it's a really a battle <laughs> with YouTube whenever they do that. Um, but yeah, feel free to comment anything on this first half. See you very soon. Bye.